Getting ready to fly, baby! Woo! I'm a guy in Dubai. I'm with Annika and Bomber, and we're in the Dubai desert in a hot air balloon. Woo! Morning everyone, my name is Peter, I shall be your pilot today. First point, after landing please stay in the basket, that means we landed, we are on the ground, you are only allowed to leave the basket when I say you can or you can or you can. So when I say landing position, you secure your things, you turn your back towards the direction we are flying to, you bend your knees gently and you hold on to the rope handle with two hands, alright? I'm filling the balloon up with hot air and I think we're getting ready to take off any minute now. And it was feeling a little bit cold in the desert, but all of a sudden it feels a little bit warmer. Right, hey. Take it off. Oh. Always depends on the. Uh, on about the you are on 20 the meters from yeah. the bottom. Yeah. If it's an easy day. I guess they don't take off too rapidly, so. The sun is just coming up, and uh, you can start to see all over the desert. And uh, it's really quite amazing here, actually. Before we couldn't see anything, it was just pitch black. So we're about 2,000 feet in the air. We're going to be traveling for about an hour. And we're and going to be going up to 4,000. Yeah, we're going double. And it suddenly just got a little bit colder right now. Yeah, it's freezing. Yeah, so I've got my jacket. And we just looked down over the edge. And yeah. actually looking over scary. the edge is quite scary. And there's not a lot stopping us from... Who's your daddy? Well... It's soft sand. It's soft sand. We should be all right. Where are we? Margam. Margam. Okay. Guys, it's called the Dubai, the National Park of Dubai, the okay. Dubai Desert Conservation Reserve. We are exactly over the National Park, which is excellent news because it's an untouched area of Dubai, about 220 square kilometers of area, and it's uh, the first national park uh, or an area dedicated to nature reservation. So the bird's name is Bummer. She's called a Jer Falcon. And uh, what she's going to do for us today is fly around the balloons. And as she's flying around, hopefully she'll come back. <laughs> she's two years old. How fast does she go? Well, as a species, they can stoop. That's a dive at about 300 kilometers an hour. The fastest is a peregrine falcon, which has been recorded at 389 kilometers an hour. So they're the fastest living creatures, falcons. Before the Bedouin had rifles and shotguns to guard hunting, they would use trained falcons. As a result, falcons are seen in this high regard and they're very prized possessions here. The reason for that is for most of the year, the Bedouin would live on camel's milk, dates and goat's meat. So in winter, there would be a mass migration of birds flying from Europe, to, uh, uh, Europe and Asia across to Africa. You have the predators following them. When they follow them, the Bedouin would then get uh, track themselves a falcon. They'll train it up to hunt in about three weeks, which is incredibly quickly. I've been flying birds 20 years and it takes me two months at least to train a bird. So three weeks is really quick. That's so that they can get that bird hunting. While it's hunting, it can then provide food for them. A couple of bits of equipment. First thing everyone always notices is the hood. The hood, or in Arabic called a burqa, is there to keep her relaxed. Okay, next bit of equipment yeah. is a tracking transmitter. It's my insurance, plan B, in case she flies away. Okay. So the hood comes off. She's totally free now. I'm just gonna give her a bit of a taster so she knows. You ready for action? Oh, we're gonna make her fly then. Where'd she go? She's wow. gonna do a circle round. Oh, it comes to Daddy. He, she loves me. She knows, eh? Yeah. She knows. <laughs> she knows who's the man here. Okay, so this will be her last flight. Hey, hey, hey! There we go. We weigh them every day to know how much to feed them. And then she'll get 10% of that. So she gets about 120 grams of food a day. Doesn't sound like much, 120 grams, but let me put it into human terms. If I was to eat 10% of my body weight, would be an eight kilogram steak. So from a kilometer up, just a bit higher than what we are right now, she can spot a pigeon four kilometers away. Wow. So if she's out hunting, 
she can scan the terrain from a great altitude. As soon as she sees the prey, she can swoop towards it and then plan her attack for the final dive. So the term Hawkeye, Eagle Eye, is no idle phrase. All right, so here I am with Bomber. Um, she seems more relaxed about things than I am. Um, it, I can stroke her here. Yeah. On the back now. Yeah, you play with the wind, just like in sailing. She's wearing her hood, keeps her calm, um, and maybe she doesn't want to look at me. Could be that. And look at these claws. They're, that's why I've got this thing on because she just claw through my hand. We're flying like 10 meters above the ground and uh, it's called a magic carpet ride. We're just hovering along the desert, which is epic right now because the sun's coming just up and you see all the shadows and all the dunes. And, oh, 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 great. And Bomber's just done a crap. Uh, and, and there the it is. <laughs> Thanks, Bomber. That uh, went through you quickly, that, that chicken. Who ever bagged the scissor? I did you a favor. Oh, right. Okay, so the falcon is the only animal that you can take on the plane, and if you buy one seat, that allows you two falcons. Right, so they don't have to go in the cargo hold with the other animals because they're special. And it's business in the world. Business class only. First class, why you didn't tell me? Ah, business class only. So you've got to pay the money. Scenes from here are epic. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, still, I'm still cold, to be honest with you, but it's uh, definitely worth it. I'm a great time. You realise how big the desert is here. It's just incredible. What it is, and uh, this whole hot air balloon experience is uh, really something else. I've never seen the desert from the air like this. That was epic. We went over the whole desert. We went right up to 4,000 feet and then down again and we went what they call the flying carpet where you go just a couple of like 10 meters above the desert and we almost i thought we were going to hit some dunes but peter the captain knew what he was doing and we went slowly over the dunes amazing first thing in the morning when the sun comes up and you've got the shadows over the dunes beautiful i think it's one of the best things you can do in dubai peter thank you so much for You're taking welcome. us that awesome. was brilliant fun thank you i really appreciate it my privilege to fly you i hope you enjoyed your flight yes and I'm getting hungry, so let's go and get a nice breakfast, all right? Yes. Now for the best bit of all, what I've been waiting for, we come to the Dubai Conservation Reserve for breakfast. So part of the package is we're gonna go get breakfast at the Al Maha Reserve, which is a private reserve. And uh, this is my ride. Uh, you know, I like to do it the old fashioned way. Um, don't think it has much in, it, in terms of AC, but uh, how do you drive this thing? So we just got to the camp, it's quite a nice little Bedouin camp, and uh, they've got some breakfast and coffee here. It's time to go home now, and uh, I've had a great day. We've been up since 4am, so I'm quite keen to get home and have some sleep but for now I'm just going to enjoy this desert